to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, June 20th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, as a surge of unaccompanied minor children flood across the border, the Obama administration has announced today that it's going to be responding with a surge of its own. Now, this surge is going to include immigration judges and U.S. attorneys that they say will help speed up the deportation of some of these undocumented immigrants. Well, they also announced uh, a series of grants to help officials in Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. This includes a $9.6 million grant to those governments to build and improve their repatriation centers. This is where the deported immigrants are going to stay once they've been flown back home. But there's also another $83 million on the table to create some new USAID programs that are going to go to improve the security and also uh, some gang prevention programs will be adopted in those countries. $93 million taxpayer dollars is what they are proposing to fix this situation. Now, uh, John Boehner has become the highest ranking official, uh, government official, to call for Obama to send the national security to secure the border. Now, Boehner said in a letter to the president, the National Guard is uniquely qualified to respond to such humanitarian crises. They are able to help deal with both the needs of these children and families, as well as relieve the border patrol to, so they can focus on their primary duty of securing our border. So I guess maybe the National Guard is gonna go there and change diapers and feed these kids. Now, Boehner puts the blame of this border surge and threat to national security squarely on the shoulders of the Obama administration. He says, the policies of your administration have directly resulted in the belief by these immigrants that once they reach U.S. soil, they'll be able to stay here indefinitely. Now, Vice President Joe Biden was dispatched to Central America as well to go ahead and try and dispel some of these swirling rumors. Um, he was sent there to do just that, to send this message. He wanted to warn against the perils of this trip and also to let people know that the U.S. is going to start detaining families at the border instead of releasing them on their own recognizance. Now, meanwhile, U.S. diplomats in the region warn families also do not send your children north and don't go themselves. The ambassador to Mexico, Anthony Wayne, said on Thursday that all who enter the United States without proper immigration status are subject to deportation proceedings. Simply put, there is no reward for the great risk to which these children are being subjected. So obviously the Obama administration has now hit overdrive. They're trying to save face, fix the situation here, put out the clear message that we're not going to be just accepting any illegal aliens that come to our country. States, of course, are worried. How are they going to be housing these unaccompanied minor children and any of the illegal immigrants that are here? How are they going to pay for all of this? And the big question, what happens if a true natural disaster hits this country? How will the government take care of its citizens? And that is exactly the question that was posed by uh, Texas Governor Rick Perry. He asked the question uh, yesterday. He said, what would happen if a major hurricane hits the U.S. and while the country was still housing thousands of undocumented children? He said, we are just going into hurricane season. Were we to have a major event and literally do not have places to house our citizens because of this influx from Mexico, I am greatly concerned the catastrophe that could occur with those two events happening simultaneously. And being, of course, from a state that is prone to hurricanes, this is a valid concern. People are still displaced from Hurricane Katrina. So what would happen if a huge hurricane were to hit Texas or Florida or any of these other states that are taking in all of these illegals? They would have nowhere to go unless they are, do actually have some FEMA detention centers just waiting to house all of us. And now Ben Shapiro over at Breitbart seems to think that Yes, there is a way to stop all of this illegal immigration, including securing the border. Uh, but what about ending the welfare state? He writes that an, an enforced border only becomes necessary in a free country for two reasons. 
First is safety, and second, the possibility of an influx of people benefiting from public resources without contributing an equivalent amount to the tax coffers. Exactly. And we're not talking about immigrants who come here because they are searching for the American dream. They want to contribute to society. They want to be part of the American experiment of self-government and self-determination, self-control. What we are talking about here are children, people who are flooding the border because they think that they're going to be taken care of. So we have children who are largely gonna be living off of welfare for quite some time until they can get a job, or other workers who are going to be willing to work for far less than what Americans are willing to work for. You know, corporations are so excited about that. But there again, these people are gonna to have to subsidize their income with welfare. So again, we have this huge influx of people who are gonna be voting for more welfare, more government programs to take care of them. And that is the issue that we have there. Basically, now we're sending everyone out to say, you know, don't come, you can't stay here. It's like pouring honey all over the picnic and hoping that the ants don't come. It's quite a mixed message that they're sending out there. And the feds, because of all of these mis mixed messages and miscommunication, they were actually forced to apologize to residents of Lawrenceville, Virginia. They failed to notify them of a plot to bring in hundreds of these illegal immigrant children into their town. Now, uh, Lawrenceville is a small town, just 1,500 people. They all packed into a high school auditorium to protest this plan, uh, which was privately arranged between a recently closed St. Paul's College and the government. Now, the agency signed a lease with the school just last Friday, and Health and Human Services would have reportedly have paid St. Paul's $100,000 a month for the next five months. So that's in addition to, you know, the 250 something dollars a day it takes to care take care of all these children and again that's our taxpayer dollars that are being used. Now the Brunswick County Sheriff told a news station seeing is believing and right now based on what we've gone through the last couple of days I'm struggling with having all the faith in the federal government right now. So here's a sheriff admitting that he does not have faith in the federal government. What is he? A terrorist, an extremist. Um, you know, but why? What's wrong with these people? Why don't they want uh, thousands of these illegal, alien, unaccompanied minor children in their town? What's wrong with them? They're just kids. That's the message that we're being fed. They're children. How dare you hate children? But you know, and for the most part, I'm going to go out there and say maybe these are kids who really f are fleeing these war-torn gang countries. But also, we know a lot of them are gang members. We just reported on this yesterday that border agents are actually quitting their jobs over the, the fact that they're being told to catch and release known gang members. Uh, the agents said regardless of whether the minors are inked with gang-affiliated tattoos and regardless of whether they admit to the border agents that they are actual gang members, so long as they have no U.S. criminal record, the agents are being forced to release them onto the streets of America. Now, many of the gang members, as InfoWars has exposed, are also being fed, housed, and provided bus tickets and vouchers to other parts of the country by the very same agency that is supposed to be deporting these dangerous people. And they know they are releasing gang members, but since they ha don't have any criminal records here so far, gotta love our American justice system, innocent until proven guilty. Hopefully they didn't buy many bus tickets to Maryland because four MS-13 gang members in Maryland have just been charged with violent crimes. And this is uh, in their connection with the conspiracy to participate in murder on behalf of MS-13. And of course, Maryland's just one of the almost 2,000 cities that are reporting having these gangs, Mexican cartel gangs and such, in their states. Now, a special agent in charge of ICE's Homeland Security Investigations Division in Baltimore, William Winter, said, attacking and dismantling violent criminal enterprises like MS-13 is one of Homeland Security's highest enforcement priorities. And he said that MS-13 members and other transnational criminal street gangs are a rising public safety threat in our communities. So why are we letting these known gang members into the country when they are at the border? Why are we allowing them in? Think about it. Who do these gangs recruit? They recruit 
young people. It's the same thing all across the world. Um, video just surfaced of an ISIS recruitment video that shows a 20 year old and a 17 year old. Uh, these are young British men. They are in a video trying to recruit people to uh, travel to Iraq and Syria to join ISIS militants. They're pleading with young Muslims and they tell the viewers, you're going to die anyway, and you know, you've know you got to make sacrifices. And then we reported also that uh, just this week, two 23-year-olds from Central Texas, um, they were arrested this week, and now they have been indicted by a federal grand jury. They were arrested and charged with conspiring to provide material support to terrorists. One of these men, a full-time UT Austin student, used a chat room to try and recruit people for committing violent jihad overseas. And then the other man had planned to fly overseas to help radicals fighting in Syria. So these are young, impressionable people that are being radicalized to fight. Now, gangs, of course, recruit young, impressionable people because not only are they easy to lure with promises of iPhones and 20 bucks, uh, but also, they'll typically get lighter sentences if they're caught. You know, they're only 14. They're just kids. They're not going to be hit with that hard sentence. But also, young people are a gold mine when it comes to recruiting their peers to join gangs and join extremist groups, just like we see the guy was there in the chat room. So this is obviously a huge issue that's going to be facing teenagers in a lot of these border cities. Yeah, it's just like uh, with the military. They go after those young, impressionable minds when they're the youth, that's the easiest way to kind of brainwash them into what you need them to do. Exactly. It's kind of frightening. Well, you were actually at one of these facilities today where they're housing these unaccompanied minor illegal aliens. And, um, you know, you were there to, for what you thought was going to be a press conference, the secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Jed Johnson, was in town. But once again, the runaround. What happened? Yeah, it was ridiculous. I mean, the Homeland Security has on their webpage right now for today's date, a press conference with Jed Johnson, FEMA, and other White House officials. So being the media, what do we do? We go down there to cover. We want to find out why they're letting these illegals flood into our nation. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Mm -hmm. We get down there. As soon as we get there, Secret Service, Homeland Security, just engulf us, surround us, take my IDs, you know, ask us why we're here. And I say, I had a printout of the actual Department of Homeland Security site saying that there was a, pre a press conference today. And the guy's like, I don't even know what you're talking about, you know, and just giving us a runaround hmm. the whole time. And I'm like, this is freaking ridiculous. You know, we drove all the way from Austin out here to cover this. We get here, and now you beat feet and run off the freaking base. Right. I mean, what are they trying to hide? So you, you, they see you arrive, and the black cars just roll out. Oh, yeah, you know, the little earpiece, you're, you know, talking into the wrist, and then slide into the car and just jet out. Wow. That's unbelievable. So there was no other press there at a press conference. No one there. No one there at all. No one else cares about it. Well, this could be another one of their green screen. <laughs> I'm on site here at the Lackland Air Force Base, and it's a green screen. You know, whatever's going on, there's something that they're trying to hide. I mean, obvious. I mean, it's... Yeah. That's exactly what Jakari and Adon were saying when they were down there, is that, at, you know, at night is when everyone would scramble out. But during the day, it was complete silence. You, it's like nothing was even happening there. Well, from, compared from last time I went with Kit, it was way more security, way more kids in there. I mean, they had that place beefed up, planes in the air flying over, you know, whatever's going on, they're trying to keep that under wraps, and they don't want the media coming in and doing their jobs. And on top of that, he's like, have you guys filmed anything? And I said, yeah. And he goes, the freaking the Department of Homeland Security guy grabs the phone and takes it into his vehicle and deletes the footage. Wow. So we can't do our job in America now. Exactly. Well, that's, you know, that's why we're always trying to do the live streaming with Ustream so that we, that footage is out. There's no way they can delete it. But they actually forcibly removed all of your cartridges and made you prove that you didn't actually get on the, the base illegally and try to sneak on. Well, once they, you know, convoyed out with uh, Jed Johnson and all that, one of the Secret Service guys stayed behind, followed behind us till we left. Then the Air Force security officers pulled us over again outside the gate to check to make sure we had no more footage again. Right, and that's what they do, is they want to treat you like you're doing something wrong. Yeah, we... By practicing and exercising your First Amendment right and doing the job of a journalist, letting America know what's happening with their taxpayer dollars and the 
true situation there at the border and what's happening at these facilities. Like, they don't even want the representatives to go in and take pictures because I think the images of these thousands of children piled on top of each other, sleeping under blankets and things like that, that's when it really...